All right, welcome to Mustay, everyone, for today's webinar on the Bhagavad Gita through Samskritam. If you haven't yet, please put in the chat where you are zooming in from. Jose Ngojo from Sarasota, Florida, thank you for joining. Venkata Chalamji from Greenbelt, Maryland. Nila from Vienna, Australia. Sachin Deshpandeji from Cleveland, Ohio. Satishji from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. Sripadji from New Jersey. Niravji from Atlanta. Yes, not too late to put in the chat where you're zooming in from uh, for today's webinar on the Bhagavad Gita through Samskritam. So with that, uh, we're asking uh, you to put your chat, your name in Zoom in the, your name where you're zooming in from in the chat. We'll get started now. Niravji from Atlanta, glad to have you on. We'll have our guests, our special panelists turn on their cameras as well. We got two folks, Sri Satish, uh, Satish, she's joined twice. One of them. Vijayji, uh, I see your hand is raised. We'll get to you shortly. Hiro from Orlando, Florida. Glad to have you with us today. And so with that, let me just give some background on today's webinar, the Bhagavad Gita through Samskritam. So a quick quote from Sri Aurobindo about the Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a true scripture of the human race, a living creation rather than a book with a new message for every age and a new meaning for every civilization. So us as Hindus in America or wherever you may be, this Bhagavad Gita, our Bhagavad Gita has so much to offer, especially in its original Samskritam, right? Um, there's so much lost in translation and uh, we're going to address that. So in this webinar, we're going to introduce you to this whole certificate program that takes you into an immersive journey into the Samskritam language and learning it through this, of course, extraordinary scripture. So we call it the Bhagavad Gita through Samskritam, the BGTS program. And it basically enables students to study the Bhagavad Gita directly without translation or mediation. And while doing so, you gain fluency in reading and comprehending Samskritam. Uh, at the end of the program, students will have the proficiency to access other Shastras as well in Samskritam on your own. So this program is really exciting to for us as Hindu University to offer. And uh, we're glad that you are joining us to learn more about this. Chintanji from Chicago, thank you for joining. Krishna Roy from uh, MI, is that Mississippi, Missouri? Glad to have you on. Uh, Satishji, uh, I see you and we'll change uh, names real quick so that everyone is clear. Um, yes, and with that, let me introduce Haridasji. Sri Haridas uh, Radhakrishnanji is originally an IT engineer, I uh, had a career in software spanning two decades, but it's really his interest in uh, Samskritam that has brought him here. It was actually rekindled, his interest in Samskritam, uh, from hearing a lecture by Swami Vidit Atmanandaji of Arsha Vidya Gurukulam. Very interesting and important organization, institution that is uh, educated, informed, and encouraged so many Hindus to get on the Dharmic path and take action in um in this way uh haridas's uh, haridasji's interests include ancient languages like greek and latin but of course samskritam has been the focus of his life since 2012 actually and he's been part of the ma program in samskritam offered by hua that, that was actually offered in collaboration with mit uh, svs in pune uh but he's also currently pursuing further research in samskritam and we're glad to have him on today leading this. And then I'll give uh, introductions for our other guests as they are introduced and in, in presenting uh, their part of today's webinar. So with that, Harid, uh, and of course, Parvati ji, glad to have you on. Satish ji, glad to have you on. With that, Haridas ji, let me hand it over to you to get us started. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Ankur ji. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Namaste, everyone and uh, welcome to this webinar. I see a lot of people from all over the world, like Ankurji said, have joined uh, this webinar. I'm glad to have you all here. And uh, I think um, if you have come to this webinar, that means you are interested in a couple of things. One is Samskritam, and the second is the Bhagavad Gita. So this course is unique in that it aims to unravel the meaning of the Bhagavad Gita through Samskritam 
in the sense that you as a student will be able to decipher the meaning of the verses by yourself to at least a, a certain level. The literal meaning at least the philosophy is a different dimension and uh, and you'll be able to explore that later but the first the goal of this course is to give you the ability to understand sanskritam enough so as to set you on the path to deciphering the meaning of these shlokas from this magnificent text and the wealth of the shastras uh, of of sanatana dharma by yourself so that's the that's the goal so it's a uh, it's two pronged. One is you have uh, how to get the student up to reading Sanskritam by himself or herself. So that uh, that is going to be a major part of the course. Uh, and secondly, once you have achieved that level of proficiency, a basic level of proficiency in the language, then we start going through the Bhagavad Gita and uh, through the 700 verses so that you get the ability to read and understand right and and pronounce those verses correctly as well that's the that's the that's the scope of this uh, of this effort so let me share my screen <clears throat> is my screen visible now can you see my slide yes okay so let's just read a couple of shlokas as as the mangala charanam or as the invocation for this uh, for this particular webinar vasudeva sutam devam kamsa chanura mardanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat gurum so i bow down to that krishna who is this who is the world teacher who teaches the world and what does he teach is the question right and for that we go to the shloka from the bhagavad gita itself there is nothing in this world as purifying as knowledge. One who has become perfected after a long time through yoga realizes that by himself in his own heart. So the key here is that there is nothing in this world as purifying as knowledge. And that is probably the essence of uh, Hindu civilization as a whole. Knowledge is the highest goal. And what kind of knowledge is it? Well, it is the most fundamental knowledge, the knowledge about oneself. And that defines one's worldview and how to interpret the world and oneself and one's own life. Right now, that is the subject matter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is a distillation of the Upanishads, which is a distillation of the Veda itself. But many students, uh, whether from India or from abroad, or people who have who are, who are newcomers or who are uh, curious about the Indi Indian civilization and culture, what they have found is that they always get to these texts and this knowledge secondhand, in that there is someone who interprets the verses, who reads the verses and interprets them, and then they get the knowledge in a secondary language. So it's secondhand, so to speak. And it has always been the quest of a huge uh, chunk of students, uh, you know, to, to, to say, you know, to basically Get, uh, make an effort as to how how can they actually understand this language by themselves and interpret the verses by themselves and then perhaps take advantage of the interpretations. Haridashi, I think your connection is breaking up. How is that right? Have you? Yes, I Looks don't like think you have a lot of yeah, connections bad. All right. Um, maybe you can uh, close some uh, other other things going on on your computer. If you have to, we can. Okay. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Is it better? Okay. So uh, I, I just stopped the screen share. No, I, I actually, I think it's your video that is, um, turn off your video, maybe that would, and then just, I don't know, the connection's not good though, bandwidth. Uh, 
Yes, yeah, still an issue. Parvati ji, do you want to jump in? That's, that's, that's what I was going to say. Satish ji, uh, in the meanwhile, if you could give a brief introduction of the BGPS yep. program itself. Right? Satish ji, okay. Yeah, most, yeah, most Let me just introduce service. Satish ji real quick. Um, he's actually a leader in the IT professional service industry, but this, during the course of his professional and personal life uh, that Satishi has the privilege of extensive international travel, working with diverse multicultural environments from pe uh, people from various nationalities and backgrounds. Satishi is the third, is in the third decade of his professional career, but he's worked with leading organizations such as Accenture, Deloitte, Consulting and Infosys. But it's of course, again, his uh, passion about Sanskritam and the revival and expansion of the Sanskrit language that has really brought him here. He has been teaching Sanskrit with Arsha Vidya Bharati since 2019. And we are glad at Hindu University of America to have Satish Ji partnering with us and working with us on this as well. All right. Uh, thank you, Ankur Ji. Can you hear me well? Yeah, great. Go ahead. All right. So can we bring up the materials? And um, and I can uh, I can talk a little bit about this course. So uh, um, just to give a background, I actually teach this course. So there's another iteration of this course that's been going on for approximately two years now. Um, and I am the teacher from the faculty for this course. So I I want to emphasize one thing here, just like Haridas Ji said, we all learn knowledge secondhand, right? So it's important that uh, when it comes to our Shastras, our texts, it's important that you have the ability to learn these things firsthand. And the way this course is structured, it, it's a very unique offering. Okay, first of all, it's not that we are going to teach you all of Sanskrit, and then we are going to teach you all of Bhagavad Gita. That's not how we are going to do it. We are going to take you through a journey where you will learn Sanskritam, but you will also learn Bhagavad Gita in parallel. Okay, and how this works is that the initial part of the course is that we want to prepare you uh, to be able to understand Bhagavad Gita well. So we are going to start off, maybe if you look at the chapter one of the Bhagavad Gita, right, where Arjuna says that I am unable to fight. So he's got a mental block. He's got a delusion. And uh, he's, he's upset at having to fight his kinsmen. So that chapter, we will take you verse by verse. And the faculty will explain the meaning in Sanskritam, why there is a certain construct in Sanskritam, why the verse is structured in that certain certain way, and what it means, right? So the initial part is going to be a lot of hand-holding. And while that hand-holding happens, you are going to learn a lot about the language, how the language is designed, what are the unique facets of the language, the different constructs that go into this language, what makes this language very unique. And uh, you will you will go through a fantastic journey of how uh, the Sanskrit language, you know, how it has influenced all all Indian languages, not just Indian languages, almost the entire gamut of Indo-European languages. Now, if you look at the Indo-European uh, language branch, it is spoken by about five billion people in the world, and Sanskritam is a language that sits at the root of that Indo-European language tree. So there is a lot of linguistic interest on this language. But even more importantly, it is an essential language to understand Sanatana Dharma, the Shastras associated with Sanatana Dharma. So you will learn the constructs of the language. You will learn how to construct your sentences. You learn various important facets of the language that will allow you to read and understand texts. So in fact, you know, later today, when uh, we have some students from my class that are going to talk a little bit about how their experience in this course has been, you will see how that journey has been for them. OK. Uh, and one more thing I want to point out, you know, is very uh, important aspect of the course is that we are not just teaching you Bhagavad Gita. We are actually empowering you. So tomorrow, if you were to pick up a verse from Ramayana, OK, you would be able to pretty much understand and interpret it. So that is the level of proficiency that we will get you to. So uh, my students are currently uh, approximately they are two years into the course. Uh, but I can tell you that each one of them that's been part of this journey for the last couple of years, can read a Sanskritam sloka, they can convert the prose into poet, the, the poetry into prose, understand and interpret its meaning in a proper way. In addition to that, they are also at a point where they can pick up a general Sanskritam material, be able to read it, understand it, interpret the meaning. So they've come a very long distance and we've got two more years in the course to go. So you imagine where they will be at the end of those four years. So. Uh, with that said, uh, you know, I just want to pause here. Um, so uh, is Haridas Ji back on, Parvati Ji? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So what I'll do is let let me let me not steal Haridas Ji's thunder. So Haridas Ji, what we will do is go through the course structure 
And then at the end of the course structure, we will invite our uh, our current students to talk a little bit about the course and their experiences. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, like Satish, you were saying, how do you get to this level of proficiency, right? Definitely, you have to learn a good part of the language. So around 60% of the course will be teaching you the language. And then 40% of the and all the examples when teaching the language are taken from the Bhagavad Gita. The course material is based upon five books which are structured around the Bhagavad Gita. So you are actually learning Bhagavad Gita from, from the get go. And by the time you come to the final year, you will be in a place where you will be able to interpret those by yourself, like, like she was saying. So that's the goal of this course. Learn the language and learn the Bhagavad Gita simultaneously. The initial parts of the course will be heavy, heavy language learning. And as we progress through the course, you will be getting more and more into the Bhagavad Gita. So that's how it's going to be. It's a twin pronged approach. Okay. So let me just quickly go through the slides uh, just in case we have not missed anything here. So <clears throat> one second. <clears throat> okay, so here we have the uh, learning objectives which I've explained. Uh, and then these are the books that we'll be following the course, uh, the Gita Sopanam. We have two books of those and the Gita Pravesha, we have three books of those. These are published with Sanskrit Bharati and you will be getting these books if you if you take this course. They will be mailed to you and we, these are the books that we will be following. There are other materials as well that I will share uh, as relevant. And we do have uh, a grading structure here. Um, there will be like uh, a, in a homework assignment every other week. The actual teaching will be done over a lecture that consists of around one and a half hours, which it happens on Saturdays at uh, eight o'clock Eastern time. And you will have uh, homeworks every homework every other week and they will be graded. Your presence and participation also counts towards the course. Great. And uh, we have uh, Parvati Ji, who is also going to be teaching this course along with me. Uh, so when I'm not able to make it, she will be teaching the course. So these are the two factors. And then we have Shraddha Ji who will be helping us with the grading. So this is some information about when this course will start. And uh, with that, um, I just want to assuage any concerns you might have about, um, you know, is four years too long? Is it too short? Actually, I think four years is just about right because we are going to have just one lecture a week and that's uh, that actually puts onus on the students as well. You will be expected to do some work <laughs> to, to get to where we are. Uh, so four years is not too intense and neither is it too uh, too long that's my opinion after teaching this the you know this material to other students as well uh what is the prerequisite of this course well one thing we expect the students to to know is uh, devanagari devanagari is the is the lippy or the script that is that we will be using to uh, uh, you know uh, in, in teaching this language to you so that is one prerequisite then that's the only one if you know hindi you already know devanagari um if you do not know devanagari and you're still interested in this course we do have another course that's that parvati ji will talk about that brings you up to speed so uh, I, I will uh, you know i'll leave that to her to explain so that's uh, that's something that i want to uh to to just bring up up front you know what are the prerequisites for this course uh, apart from that uh, i think we'll just leave it to uh, to the q and a session and uh, with that i'll give it to ankur ji great yes so let's uh, have parvati ji uh, add her commentary like you said there's a lot of details in you know a certificate program where you're in it for 4 years learning bhagavad gita through sanskritam so with that let me just introduce uh, parvati ji um she's actually a physical therapist by profession practiced in india prior to moving in houston moving to Houston. But of course, her areas of interest are Sanskritam, but also Vedanta. She's currently teaching Sanskrit for Arsha Vidya Bharati students, as well as Hindu University of America. We had her at one of our retreats, and we're planning a Sanskritam retreat in the future. We've got so many programs in Sanskritam. It's such an important language. And this particular Bhavad Gita through Sanskritam is, I'm excited to offer it. And I think Parvati Ji is also proud and excited to be a part of uh, all the different programs that we're offering. So Parvati Ji, to you to give us some more background and context to this and maybe some of the details, how it's like. And, I, and in the chat, I'll drop uh, some links so you can take a look as well. Thank you, Ankurji. Uh, namaste. 
Uh, I teach the certificate program in Sanskrit proficiency as well as the micro certificate in spoken Sanskrit at HUV currently. Uh, we have three Sanskritam programs for the at the certificate level. One is the certificate program in Sanskrit proficiency, which starts at the very beginning. No knowledge of Sanskritam, even the script is required at that point. A person who does not know any Sanskritam, reading, writing alphabets can join that program and start by learning the alphabets, the pronunciation. And after that, they can, if you're interested in uh, Bhagavad Gita through Sanskritam, you could always move from that program into this one once you learn the Devanagari script. Or continue learning Sanskritam mm -hmm. in the uh, certificate program uh, uh, itself, in that certificate program itself. Uh, we have a parallel one called as uh, micro certificate in spoken Sanskritam. Uh, the written uh, and uh, the reading, the writing is one aspect of Sanskritam. Uh, people who have done this before can vouch for it that the speaking does not come automatically because one does not employ it. So to give an opportunity for students to be able to use it in transactional uh, you know, manner in, on an everyday basis, the micro certificate and spoken Sanskritam is a program that divides. Uh, that is a one and a half year program. It takes a person, uh, it, there there's no uh, grammar that is specifically being taught. It is more um, everyday Sanskrit. So we do not take up the specific texts. We do not go into the shlokas. None of those are done. But on a daily basis, what is the Sanskrit that you would use? A transactional spoken manner. That is all that is taught. Uh, that's, a, as I mentioned, a one and a half year program. Uh, these uh, certificate programs in Sanskrit proficiency and the Bhagavad Gita through Sanskritam are four year programs. So we have four phases for both these programs. Uh, the beginner, intermediate, advanced, and proficiency. So once a person completes the four years of the BJTS or the CPSP, they would be able to take the Sanskrit proficiency test, which is an eligibility test for the uh, master's in Sanskritam program offered at the HUA. And if they clear that uh, SPT, which is an easy thing for anyone who has completed these four years of study, they enter into the master's program of Sanskritam. Uh, that is the next step once this program is done. Um, people who are already uh, halfway through Sanskritam have taken some uh, Sanskritam in uh, uh, high school or if you have prior knowledge, you could always reach out to us and we will give you lateral entry into these programs as well. You do not have to start at the very beginning. Uh, this is true for the uh, certificate program in Sanskrit proficiency. Not so much for the Bhagavad Gita through Sanskritam because probably you will want to start at the very beginning. You don't want to start in the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. So that is something that's offered at the certificate program in Sanskrit proficiency. So these are some of the programs that we have. And uh, all these programs are structured in a way that um, in, a in a quarterly, uh, you know, the each course is a quarter. A quarter is 10 weeks. So 10 weeks of uh, in um, I would say on Zoom, it's not in person, on Zoom live classes with an instructor of one and a half hour duration per week. And then the 11th week, would there would be an exam. So for whatever you've studied during that quarter, you would be assessed. And after that, there will be a week or two of break, depending on which quarter it is. The summer, you would have a longer uh, break. And uh, fall quarter, you might have just a one week break. Um, and winter quarter also will be about a week a week, week and a half. And that's all the break that you would have before you go into the next quarter. So it runs in quarters. So one uh, phase is, uh, it has four quarters. So totally we're talking about 16 courses, 16 quarters over the four years. Once, uh, as I mentioned, you complete that, you will get a certificate for the program. Those who gain this lateral entry that I talked about, will not get a program certificate because you would not have completed the entire program. So those who want a certificate for the program will have to complete the 16 courses in order to get uh, the certificate um, for the uh, entire program. That said, I would say I am done with whatever I had to share. There are so many more details, but you know that I would take up after the Q&A because it will become more relevant at that point. Uh, Ankurji, do we want yeah. to uh, have the other panelists speak before we take the Q and A? Yeah, uh, Haridashi, you're done. Sadishi, you're done. Uh, so the other panelists are uh, student 
Um, yeah, I so, said the wrong name. So if you want to give an introduction. Yeah, Ankur, Ankur ji, I will do that. Okay. So let me, so uh, let me just uh, uh, introduce Sai Ramji. Uh, let Sai Ramji and Shashank ji, our two students, introduce themselves. But uh, I have a request for them. So after they introduce themselves, there are a few things that I would like them to talk about. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, uh, why they joined the course, how the experience in this course has been, how has their experience been of the materials, the faculty, and the lectures, and uh, how it has how it has been of value to them? Okay, so these are some of the things that I would request both Shashankji and Sairamji to talk about. So, Ankurji, can you please make Shashankji a panelist so that he can come on and talk? Meanwhile, we'll hand the baton to uh, Sairamji. Sairamji, uh, one of our top students in Bhagavad Gita through Samskutam, he's been with us for over one and a half years, almost two years now. So uh, I will request him to come in, uh, air his viewpoints on some of the topics that, that I requested just now. Go ahead, Sai Ramji. Bhavatam Sarvesham Namo Namaha. Mama Nama Sai Ramaha. Aham Pleno Nagare, Texas Pradesh Vasami. Bhasheshu Mama Priya Bhasha Samskritam. Tarunavaye Api Aham Samskritam Apatam Hintu Nagnathawan. Ataha Aduna Aham Hindu University of America Shikshanam Karomi. Well, I didn't, I'll stop here. You know, that's all I can speak in Sanskritam, but you know, I just wanted to kind of introduce myself in Sanskritam. You know, hopefully some of you uh, got what I said, but I will uh, translate that for you. Uh, what I essentially said was that uh, my name is uh, uh, Sairam and uh, I am uh, from uh, Plano, Texas. Uh, among uh, languages, uh, my favorite language is uh, Sanskrit. Uh, during my schooling years, I learned uh, Sanskrit, but not really understand the, the grammatical structure. You know, I really struggled with it. And so now I'm uh, learning Sanskrit at HUA. So that's kind of what I said uh, in my uh, Sanskrit. Uh, so hopefully, you know, I didn't make any mistakes there and. Uh, uh, you know, some of you, you know, understood it. Um, so anyway, coming back to uh, why I you know, got into this, uh, uh, like uh, you said, you know, I uh, learned a little bit in, in, during my uh, in school years. And I've always had an interest in uh, learning uh, Sanskrit, but, you know, uh, really didn't find an opportunity or the, or the right, uh, you know, forum or platform to learn it. And, uh, you know, I know there are, you know, several organizations uh, uh, in the U.S. that does help uh, students learn this language. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, just, uh, you know, I never got around to doing it. Um, and so uh, when I um, um, heard about, uh, you know, in the University of America a few years ago, they announced uh, uh, the courses of you know, in, uh, Sanskrit through Bhagavad Gita, I really jumped on it because I have had interest in this for many years. I've been learning shlokas, you know, throughout my life and uh, really chanting, but not really understand the meaning of it. You know? So, but I really wanted to be able to uh, have a much better, you know, understanding of uh, the language uh, where I could uh, first understand it uh, uh, like um, uh, Haridas Ji and you know, so these dimension, you know, to understand it uh, at my own level and be able to converse, you know, so that's my goal. And um, uh, so I really, you know, when I, I was very thankful, you know, when uh, HUA came along and offered this uh, course and I uh, attended one of these seminars like this and uh, I was quite impressed and uh, I thought this was the right place for me to start uh, learning some stuff. So I like it because, you know, it's uh, it's very structured like uh, any university course, you know, it's uh, so that it, there's a discipline around uh, this a whole program where you actually, you know, uh, have a class every week and then you, you know, homeworks and then, then you study for exam. And so it keeps you engaged, you know, in this uh, program because of this uh, uh, environment, uh, classic environment. And then you have a cohort of uh, students that are you know, studying with you. And so you become friends and you engage with them, you know, through uh, group discussions and things like that. 
so that's why I uh, found it very interesting. And in the class, you know, we not only learn the grammar and the structure, grammatical structure, and uh, but we also learn, uh, read a lot of stories. And that, that to me is very, uh, really uh, enjoyable. And uh, because, you know, we, we, it's very interesting, you know, to read some, some stories and uh, it's a sort of fun. And uh, we're really thankful to uh, Satish Ji and uh, for, for making the class so interesting. And um, and so, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my experience. I really uh, love this program and, uh, and encourage you, you know, if anybody's interested in this program, definitely consider taking this. Uh, you know, you'll have to spend more time on it to, you know, uh, to to really learn. I think you will do it because, you know, this is, this is really an interesting and uh, excellent course. Uh, All right. Thank you, Sairamji. Sairamji, how many hours a week do you typically uh, prepare for this course? So, apart from uh, apart from attending the class? Yeah, you know, so, um, you know, I, I don't really keep count, but, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about it, you know, so when I'm either commuting or, uh, you know, to work, or if I'm you know, at home, I'm trying to always, you know, um, uh, you know, construct sentences and some of them or read something, listen to something. So, so I don't really keep track, you know, for this course. So that all adds up maybe, you know, uh, maybe four hours, you know, four or five hours perhaps in a week. All right. All right. Amazing. So let's go to let's go to Shashangji. Shashangji, you want to talk a little bit about your your personal experiences in this journey? Absolutely. Namaste, uh, Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So uh, first of all, uh, very happy to be part of this panel today. Um, and I think uh, my interest uh, has got much to do with the fact that I had uh, taken Sanskrit during my school days, uh, eight, nine, tenth, and uh, so that. Uh, interest was always there, albeit in a in a dormant state. And when I learned about the Hindu University of America and BGTS, uh, which is the four year four year course, I was super excited because always I felt that, you know, during those school days, it was more of, you know, just rote memorization, right? Just do the Subhashita Malas and the, the, the stories and make sure that you can translate them accurately into English. And uh, the objective there was to score as many uh, marks as you could get in a Sanskrit exam and help with uh, your eventual aggregate marks, right? So the objective was completely different then as a young child, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old. And fast forward about 30 plus years, then, you know, you get into the, the spiritual aspects and uh, you know, wanting to learn the Bhagavad Gita, understand the Bhagavad Gita and all. And that required a course, uh, and it was a perfect timing when I was looking at it. And uh, the, what makes it particularly a very, very interesting and motivating and engaging is the fact that we have a lovely, lovely faculty in the form of uh, Satish Srinivasan Sri and, uh, and Shraddha, uh, ably supported by Shraddha Modi Ji. And the way I think it is, if Satish he's going to be a faculty, his very, very busy professional and personal life, if he can have, make the time and the commitment to teach us uh, week after week and uh, uh, constantly encourage us and keep, keep the class very, very lively and engaging, uh, it, would, it would be difficult because there are so many distractions we have. And so it's very easy to say, oh, I, I probably may miss the class today or something to that effect, right? But it's Satish's uh, motivation, his, his, his heightened levels of engagement that make it a very interesting class. And final, final words for me is, uh, like uh, Sai Ramji said, right? Um, we have a fantastic cohort uh, of students, about 16 or 17 of us classmates, who have now now take it, taken it to the next level, right? So in, uh, and Sai Ramji is one of those, and there's a reason why he's one of the top students, okay? So he and many of his, uh, or many of our cohorts, they engage in like conversational Sanskrit. So whatever they have to say, they're all saying it in Sanskrit or, or, or WhatsApp chat. So that is the level of engagement the students have. And it, the credit, entire credit goes to HUA and the wonderful faculty we have. And uh, you know, to to answer one of Satish's question, Satish's question to Sairamji is that uh, I probably spend end up spending two two to three hours every week in addition to the class time of ninety minutes. So if, if there's anything else, Satishji, you would like me to talk about, I'm happy to do so. No. Uh, also, uh, Shashankji, um, 
let's say you know fast for uh, go go backwards uh, maybe a year uh, from now and then from then on until this point of time you are able to read the shlokas you've been able to read shlokas like we've covered ramayana shlokas in the class we've covered non bhagavad gita texts and shlokas in the class and also plenty of bhagavad gita shlokas now if you read them in sanskrit are you able to uh, how are you able to interpret it and be able to explain the meaning in sanskrit them itself do the anvaya all those things can you talk a little bit about that journey absolutely in in that in this past one year we have done a, a good bit of work on anvaya so anvaya is where you you have a, 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 the bhagavad gita which is in a poetry form and you have to convert that into prose um, and that initially uh, it was a little hard <laughs> even with my son's prior sanskrit background of course there was a huge gap of 30 plus years but we have learned so much and so you know folks that are starting and they might feel that oh this is a way bit too much grammar but that is all necessary because without that understanding all of the different vibhaktis and how to you know how how the nouns and adjectives and how they go all go in parallel without understanding that without breaking the words there are a joined words called a samasik shabda right how you break it into that how how to make the meaning out of it be able to convert it rearrange the words so that you can put those in the prose form uh, is is something that requires a good bit of practice and though those exercises have also helped us understand many of the short stories that are so beautifully laid out in the many books that the gita sopanam or the gita pravesha uh, mostly gita sopanam has the stories and they 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 build in they woven it so beautifully as you know every grammar grammar that you, new uh, grammar that you learn is nicely woven into a beautiful text uh, story that makes it a very engaging and also uh, touches upon all of the different grammatical aspects so it has been very very helpful so uh, to answer satish's question learned a lot and all of that is going to make the the remainder of the bhagavad gita so we are on chapter 3 right now so from 3 at the almost a half point stage to by the time we're done with the four year program we will be going through the remainder of the bhagavad gita chapters very very fast and the only reason we can do that is because of the very solid foundation in sanskrit grammar that we have had in the in the time leading up to this time since explored so far right dhanyawad shashank ji that was uh, that was very nice of you to say and it was uh, really a uh, lot of good feedback Uh, on the course so uh, we uh, we are now ready to take any questions the panels there haridas ji is there he's a great faculty so um, so let's let's open for any questions that we need to answer uh, ankur ji so uh, let yeah. us know i mean i can take questions on the current course and then anything for haridas ji and parvati ji they can go ahead and uh, take it so between our wonderful faculty we've been answering questions in the q and a box when we type them out you should be able to see them so We've already answered about nineteen questions. Um, if there's any in particular you think you want to uh, re-articulate or clearly state, right? You don't have to be Hindu to be enrolled in any of these programs. Uh, the Devanagari script we talked about that quite a bit. A lot of people were interested in that particular uh, stepwise. Where do you have to be? How do you learn it? I think we covered that uh, sufficiently. Um, let me just actually launch a quick poll. let us know if you're interested in enrolling um if you have new questions please put them in the q and a box we're, we only have two open questions uh right if you miss a class uh it's an online program so there are recordings available but we encourage you to interact live because you can actually interact ask your questions engage so when you miss a class there's a whole um recording you can access through our learning management system the LMS it's a professional um online system that allows you week by week to get the readings to get the assignments to get the questions to have engagement through uh whatever communication you set up with your class if it's a google group or a whatsapp to engage with the faculty so even though it's online and you can miss a class we encourage you to engage and participate because that's where you really learn um any other questions that uh you want to reanswer or or um reiterate on um any of our guests so i just want to say one thing <clears throat> the uniqueness of this particular course among the various offerings that hua offers is that it is it is anchored around the bhagavad gita text and that gives a depth of philosophical possibility right so basically you are anchored around a text that's 
the core philosophy of sanatana dharma and that brings life to this this whole effort it gives continuity to this four year program right and it's it's meant for a particular set of students who have proficiency in the script but really want to learn sanskritam and at the same time want to make some progress in the study of the philosophy as well at least the ability to learn or to read the gita by themselves that's that's a that's a pretty unique set of students right and that's where the uniqueness of this program lies among the various offerings of of hua so once you complete this program you will be very well set to uh, pursue studies in any any uh, masters program in sanskrit whether it's a focus program or let's say vyakaranam grammar or sahityam the literature or vedanta it really gives you it it little set you up very well for uh, for those programs which are also uh, offered by hua and uh, that's something that i want to to emphasize as to the uniqueness of this particular course yeah with that uh, any more questions yes the only offering this next quarter is going to be saturday at 8 pm um we're offering one cohort per quarter so um that is what it is right now shripaji thank you for your question uh nina ji yeah we can do some individual follow up happy to do that answer specific questions if you don't want to ask them in in the group setting um certificate janthi ji does somebody want to take uh, Jan janthi ji's question parvati ji maybe you know is janthi ji is in the certificate program yes so let me just glance at this particular question yes the you if you know devanagari and the gita sopanam does go very quickly into many vivaktis like you are concerned but uh, there is going to be a significant introduction to the language that i'm going to give even before we get into the into the gita sopanam so that is uh, it's going to be a 50000 foot view into the grammatical structure of how this language works and that will allay any concerns as to you know quickly jumping into the text and getting lost in the weeds so i'm aware that uh, all the students who are coming to hua you know they are really focused on on the meaning of what they're studying rather than rote memorization or quickly jumping into something without getting the the broad view of what they're getting into and that's something which uh, which i aim to fulfill and which satish ji has also and we have had extensive conversations about it how one cannot directly jump into this into the course into the course books and that requires an extensive introduction and which you will be getting as part of this course as, actually the first quarter it will be a, a, most of it will be a, a birds eye view of this particular language even before you get into the weeds so that hopefully one answers more, your question one more thing uh, one more thing i want to point out if you look at gita pravesha or gita sopanam those books so you open those books you are not going to find a single word in english so uh, we don't expect you to go open those books read and understand those books so we are going to uh, the way this course will start is that we will start with english and then go to sanskrit so uh, we will start explaining the explaining the concepts we are not going to go accelerate through the vibhaktis we are not going to teach you all the seven cases um, and and the 10 verb forms in one go we are not going to do all of that it's going to be a step by step process uh so that you don't get overwhelmed with the with the vibhaktis don't get overwhelmed with all the all the verb forms and participles and all of those things so many of which are there in sanskritam language so we will we will make it a step by step process for you okay so if you've gone through vibhaktis and you felt overwhelmed earlier that will meet not be the case in this particular course now that's one of the reasons why this is a little bit of a uh, a course which is paced in such a way that first couple of years we want to lay the foundation and then we are going to accelerate and then you will find yourself being able to accelerate like you would have never expected to so um, uh, that's that's the assurance that that i want to give on this call yeah i mean there's a reason why it's spread over four years and uh, it's it's very uh, very well paced you will be getting a it's it's a trade off right like you you need an introduction into the overall view of the language which you will get but then after that you got to take it slow and that's where the time commitment comes in which is spread out over these four years uh that's uh that's and i see dr raj bumakanti's question here well for any um any such concerns that you might have one thing is fundamental your own ability to understand the language right and if you want to whether your aim is to preserve sanatana dharma or to uh, defend it whatever it may be if you are unable to own the language 
right then you uh, you're in a, you're not in a good place to do so so th this is the first step so that's how it's going to help you in the pushback to answer your question great i see we're still answering many questions um Maybe by typing. I think uh, just in the audience, if you can let me know, if you see an answered question, you can uh, see the question and the answer, correct? So you can scroll through yeah. and see that. So each class is one and a half hours long. So on Saturday at 8 o'clock, each class will last you one, around one and a half hours. Yeah. Right. The, we actually just had a beginning uh, Samskritam number one, number one, last quarter, where you actually learn the Devanagari script and go from there. So we're, um, again, we can't offer every course every quarter, but it will be offered again. So just, um, you know, show your interest, let us know. And then when we offer that first step out of first step, we can um, plug you in then. Yeah, I saw some questions on the Devanagari script. So the Devanagari script is the writing system that is required for Sanskritam. Okay, so we've been following the script for about best part of 12, 1300 years now. So that, uh, sorry, about 1000 years, not so much. Uh, so that understanding Devanagari becomes, um, you know, a prerequisite for this course. So we expect you to, to be able to read and write in Devanagari. But however, we do not expect you to understand what you are able to read and write. All we are asking you is to know the writing system. And to that extent, HUA offers a six-week course. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Parvati ji. It's six-week course, right? Four or six weeks. It is a six-week course. Six-week course, yeah. So, yeah, you, you can do that six-week course. It teaches you the Devanagari script, which is a common script for many North Indian languages. Uh, do that, it's and then you come to course. this course. The program consists of six courses. It's not six weeks. Uh, one and a half. Uh, did I hear the, your question correctly? Could you restate the, your question? The, Deva, the Devanagari course. Devanagari is a whole course. I mean, it's a one quarter course. It's not six weeks. It's a one quarter. It's not six weeks. It's a one quarter course. So that that course uh, would be a prerequisite for those that do not know Devanagari script. Okay, those who are already familiar with the script, uh, exposed to Sanskritam a little bit, exposed to the Hindi language a little bit, you can come straight into this course. But if you absolutely do not know the script, then we suggest you learn the script because that becomes a prerequisite for this course. However, we don't expect you to know the language. So you may be able to read something in Devanagari. We don't expect you to understand what you read. That is for us to do. So we will help you do that understanding. And actually, Sanskritam is script agnostic, but we have chosen yeah. Devanagari because most of the literature is in Devanagari. And uh, it, it's actually a very fundamental requirement for any Sanskrit student to, to learn Devanagari. So we have kept that as the minimum bar for joining this course. You just need to know the script and uh, you don't need to know Sanskrit grammar at all. That's what we'll teach you here, but uh, you do need to know the script. Yeah, yeah a little, little bit of trivia, a little bit of trivia here. So Sanskrit has gone through many writing systems. Okay, initially it didn't even have a writing system. Then we adopted Brahmi. And then after that, there have been a spate of scripts like, like Sharada and Granthalipi and all of those. But finally we've settled on Devanagari and Devanagari is like the, the standard for the language at this point in time. So it's a, it's a very interesting script. And if you do not know it, I say read that and then come and do this course. Great. One more time, I dropped in the chat the details for the first course starting on Saturday, July 13th at 8 p.m. on Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can click there and see some of those details. I had two hands up from uh, audience members, Dr. Raj Bomukanti. I don't know if you already had your question answered. And then Josh uh, Ngojo, if you want to unmute and ask your question directly, you can do that. If not, maybe you just have your hand up and it got stuck. That's okay as well. Yeah. <laughs> Malina is asking, where did the name Devanagari come from? Etymology, histor history lesson a little bit. Yeah, well, the word the, the word deva is the datu div, which means to shine or to play. So, and nagari, nagara means a city. So, you can say that this is a a, a language where the very letters are objects of play or objects of knowledge, impart knowledge, div to shine. The verbal root div means to shine as well. 
So with that said, uh, this whole system of verbal roots, which, which we're talking about now, is a legacy of Sanskritam. Today we have, we talk about Indo-European verbal roots, etc. The fact that a language is based upon verbal roots, that itself is a legacy of Sanskritam. And you can see that in Devanagari here, uh, when we say Devanagari, it is the abode of the Devas, that's another way to say it. So every Akshara is a Deva, or and what is a Deva? A Deva is a conscious being which imparts knowledge. Or a deva is a conscious being which is at play, and we are those conscious beings. So many ways to interpret and so many ways to play, right? That's that's Sanskritam. And you will learn a lot of lot of such trivia during the course. Uh, okay, so it's not just going to be Sanskrit grammar and Bhagavad Gita. The etymology of many words are so fantastic and fabulous that uh, that it'll I would I will promise you that this is going to be a journey by itself. And yeah, this is not about scripts. This is, we're not, you're not going to learn any more scripts. We do have um, uh, other avenues for that. But because Sanskritam is primarily an oral language, right? It's like I said, script agnostic. So we're not going to teach you Brahmi, etc. We are going to stick with Devanagari, and uh, that's going to be the medium through uh, of your textbooks as well. I will be teaching in English for, more, for the most part. But like uh, one of our students said, you will pick up conversational Sanskritam. And that will, by the end of the second year, you can say how fluently uh, you know our students are speaking in Sanskrit. So you will be getting that as part of this course. Uh, but no, no more scripts. It's all about the language. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? We went through forty questions. Glad to answer your questions and address your concerns. I learned a lot, as I always do on these webinars. Um, it's always my pleasure to host. Maybe we can go around uh, one time and uh, give some closing thoughts and comments again. We at Hindu University of America know how important Sanskritam is for the civilizational mission we're on, right? Rejuvenation, recovery, stewardship, restoration. It's so important that we actually, uh, maybe we as a collective, I myself am not uh, down the Sanskritam path, but I'm so glad and proud that so many of our folks are interested in this, are recovering this, and Hindu University of America is offering so many different programs in this space for you to uh, participate in, engage in, and learn from. So uh, with that, that's my closing uh, little statement. Just make sure you answer the poll question. Let us know if you're interested. Uh, thank you for being on. Um, and I will share some details in the chat uh, with contact information and other people uh, who you can get in contact with. So that is my little piece. Thank you all for being on. And we'll go around um, our, our panelists and, and maybe some closing thoughts and maybe a, a shloka to close us out on. So I'll let you uh, decide who wants to go first. So uh, I think all of us who are interested in knowledge should learn Sanskritam. Sanskritam is a doorway to a unique kind of knowledge found in, in, in our ancient civilization, in the Indian civilization. And if you have any curiosity, wherever you are from the world, about India and its culture, this is a magnificent introduction. That's one. As far as the shloka goes, Sahanavavatu, Sahanau Bhunaktu, Sahavir Yankaravavahai, Tejasvi Nau Adhita Mastu, Ma Vidvishavahai. May whatever we study be Tejasvi for us. May, may it give us energy and knowledge. And may we never ever live in disharmony. That is a perfect Mangala Shloka as well, I think. There are a couple more questions. Uh... On the chat, Haridashi, would you like to take that or you want to type it? Uh, okay, let me just look at those. So, uh, let me see. What is the difference between Brahman and Brahma? Okay. Uh, Brahma has got many. The Datu for, for the word Brahma is from Brh, which means to expand or to grow. So, Brahma is that which is ever expanding. Now, what is that consciousness, universe, what you want to call as God? That is Brahma. And a personification of the Brahma is called Chaturmukha Brahma, which is a, a, we think of Brahma as having four faces. That's a personification of Brahman, right? So Brahman is the Nirguna, which means that there are no qualities which are imposed on Brahman. And Brahma is Chaturmukha Brahma, where you impose a certain form on, on that, an anthropomorphic form, perhaps. If you impose that, that's Brahma. Why is poetry converted to prose? Well, for the sake of understanding, for the, for, when a student reads poetry, 
if, if you can understand it in the, poet, in the in the meter form, that's great. But for the beginning student, it's better to convert it to subject object verb form because that's where most of us are now as beginners. And uh, that process is there's a certain process for that in Sanskritam. That's why we usually students usually do that, right? Not the fluent readers. I think I've answered which uh, which levels of, of this course to sign up. There are so many levels for this course. Obviously, you should sign up for the first one because it starts off from there. You can't just jump in in the middle. We don't recommend that because there's a certain krama, a sequence that you're following. And so you start with the first course of, of this four years sequence. Uh, many groups, many here. OK, fine. Uh, we won't be teaching in Tamil. Yes, I do know some Tamil. So if you have some questions, maybe we can take it. But uh, it's, it's all going to be in English because we have an international audience and we are going to be teaching in English in, in our university. And we may mix in some Sanskritam once the students get familiar with it. But for the most part, it is going to be in English. And the focus is to make sure that the students understand what the, the faculty is teaching. That's why it's going to be in English. Um, any other questions? I, any other serious questions here? I think uh, uh, how long are the sessions? Yeah. These have been answered. Yeah, uh, I think someone is requesting for the registration. Uh, how do we get in touch with someone? Maybe you could share the gadget details in the chat. Or... Yeah, I have it. Uh, here's a screen and I'll put it in the chat. But Prageji is our director of registrations. Uh, Pragyavats. This is her number and I'll put it in the chat as well. Email and chat. Um, Vrishniji is asking, are HUA degrees accredited by HLC? We are in the process of applying for accreditation. So by the time you finish this four-year program, your certificate will be accredited. It is grandfathered in. We're going to get accreditation. This is a big mission that we are on, definitely a driving factor and priority for HUA while we do all this um, actual teaching and learning, right? But the accreditation is an operational piece we are absolutely working on. Uh, for all of you who may have further questions after this webinar is over, uh, you may contact Pagyaji and uh, if you need to uh, speak with us, if there are questions that only we can answer, Pagyaji will definitely be able to put you in touch with us. Uh, so please reach yeah. out to Pragyaji for, for if you, any further questions about registration or even if you are not sure about where to register, what course to register, because we talked about a certificate program in Sanskrit proficiency, micro certificate in spoken Sanskritam and the Bhagavad Gita through Sanskritam. So we talked about three things. So if you're not sure, especially if you still are yet to learn Devanagari and you are not able to enter the BGTS at this point, please talk to Pragyaji and she will, um, uh, you know, Put you down for the uh, next batch of the CPSP program. And if you have further questions, she will uh, help you reach out to us. Parvatiji, closing thoughts? Just uh, your experience as part of this program, where we're going, maybe a little vision. Uh, there are many who have taken uh, our Sanskritam courses people who are uh, beginners and uh, there are many who have completed these programs and uh, are now pursuing the master's program or taking up uh, other uh, scriptures to study on their own. Now, this is a program that requires a lot of effort and perseverance. So once you begin, we have the saying um, that one who begins, the best people when they begin something, they do not give up on it soon. So they will persevere and they will go forward. Initially, either whether it is learning the Devanagari script or learning the Vibhaktis, many of you may have heard the Vibhaktis are scary. It's not so scary. It's just a question of understanding the pattern. So initially, something when it's new, it may seem scary. But once a person perseveres and goes through it, you will see that if I can do it, all of you can do it. It's as simple as that. And uh, many uh, have learned this language as adults. It's not necessary that you start as a child. So many adults who come to Vechue have never had any um, other uh, Sanskritam background. They have never heard the about the language. They have never seen the script before, but this was their first time. And they have been able to uh, complete the program successfully. And again, age is no bar. We have students who are uh, senior citizens and uh, they have taken this up after retiring from whatever their proficiency there. 
and they have been able to successfully learn the language and apply it in their scriptural studies. Uh, so I would like to close by saying that uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for all of, all of you out there who want to learn Sanskritam. Um, at some point or the other, you must have felt that you needed to know this language in order to uh, have a meaningful um, how would it, uh, you know, understanding of all the texts, all the shlokas that you may have come across, whether it is yoga, Ayurveda, wherever you came across the Sanskritam verse and you, were, you wanted to learn uh, what it meant uh, in the language that it was said in because translations usually there are a lot of things that are lost in it and you must have had a reason to feel that yes i would like to know what it said in the language in it in which it was written so if you felt that then this is a wonderful opportunity for you and you should not miss it. and uh, our uh, beginner level courses the vgts is going to be offered this quarter and that is the coming quarter the summer quarter and the other two programs we talked about are going to happen in the fall quarter. So this is your window. Think about when you're ready and uh, apply accordingly. Satish Ji, please, Satish Ji, give his closing remarks. No, no, nothing, nothing new to add from my side. I'm, uh, I'm just excited that so many people have turned up for this webinar, and uh, this is a great course. I would recommend this to all of you. And like I said, it's a journey, and it'll be a fantastic journey. Under uh, under the expert tutelage of uh, Haridas Ji, so um, and the full support of the of the HUA behind him, so rest assured that uh, that once you do this course, you will be proficient in Sanskritam. You will be able to learn and interpret Sanskritam texts by yourself, and think about the th treasure flow of literature that Sanskritam offers. It's a magical world by itself, and that is that enchanted place is where we want to get you to. Okay, so with that, I would wish all. Wish you all all the best, and I want to give really the the floor to Haridasi to close this out. Well, this is a golden door, right? So that's what some, that's what this opportunity is. Uh, that's and this golden door leads to something that's ever shining, and at this word shining comes so many times in your study of Sanskritam. That which shines of the two thousand verbal roots. A huge chunk of them deal with this concept of shining because that which really shines is knowledge and we are on the quest for knowledge and why are we on the quest for knowledge perhaps one says that we are on this quest for knowledge because we are on the quest for immortality and immortality is not possible through the physical body vidyaya vintate amritam that is where we should end one finds immortality through knowledge and this doorway leads you to that to that immortality to amritam with that, I want to close the stage. Haridashri, are you going to conclude with a Shanti Mantram? Oh, yeah. Om. We'll, we'll, we'll end with a prayer to Saraswati herself, which is the embodiment of knowledge. Om Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kamarupini Vidyarambhang Karishyam Siddhir Bhavatu Me Sada. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.